Hi guys, so today I have this new set from Diane Press to share with you. This is something that they did bring to HSN, so I'll have the links there for you guys. This was something that was sent free of charge for my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you are purchased items through those links. So this one happens to be called the uh, Interactive Nutcracker Stamp and Die Kit, and I have been super curious to see this. Oh my goodness! Did not disappoint, of course. Look how cute! <laughs> <laughs> let's see what this is about because interactive nutcracker so let's pop this open oh this is so cute to see early in the morning because I'm just like ready to go <laughs> so let's look at this and then we'll check out the um, items that way we have a good idea of what we're we're getting into here so it says oh, okay so here's a little tab pull that is adorable a horizontal card example so when you pull it, it says like go nuts you know it's Christmas um, let's crack in <laughs> nut thing okay <laughs> happy holidays and then if you want a vertical card just you know it's the same orientation it's just the card when you cut it long ways instead of the a2 size being eight and a half by five and a half you have the four and a quarter by eleven and then you scored at five and a half so there's that um, again you know has some of the info that we're gonna need um, for the card base and all those kind of goodies um, and then how to create the little character again with the pull tab we're not you know pull tabs are not new to us we've uh, done this before with the diamond press sets this one's done a little bit differently though so let's check this out oh my gosh how sweet Look at that. So they have little heads, little bodies, <laughs> a little different from each other. And then um, there's all these little pieces, like um, it looks like right here he might be holding something. So we have like a little staff or whatever. I think those are, well, I don't want to guess. <laughs> yeah, the pull tabs. Um, nom nom, it's Christmas, go nuts. Nutty or nice from the nut house. What's cracking? Happy holidays, nut thing, and pull in the little sword. Oh my gosh! And then of course a little quote bubble. We have a cutting folder. We have um, dimensional adhesive, which feels really nice. I love this one. It's a little um, thinner than like some of the other typical types I have, and some that I have that are circles are way too thick. So this is I love this. And then um, the cutting dies to cut the whole front of the card. Um, all the pull tab pieces, of course the accessory pieces, the little characters, and then what they have in another um, kind of pull tab area. Um, yeah. Alright guys, so let me grab some papers and we will get started. Okay, so to get started with the Nutcracker, we're going to start with the card base. And I mentioned, you know, they have the horizontal card, the vertical card. I'm going to try the vertical one today, um, just to switch up what I normally do. And like I mentioned, um, on an A2 size piece of paper. Okay, so on the a A2 size paper, that means you're going to have to cut on this 8.5 inch side at 4 and a quarter, and then leave the 11 inches length. If you want to do the vertical card the other way, clearly you're going to cut at 5.5 inches on the 11 inch side, and then leave. Now you have two card bases, essentially. Um, let me get this. And now we're just going to score it at 5.5 inches, and that will be our card base. So before I score it or anything else, what we're going to do is go ahead and cut like it says here. And they're showing you if you have a standard A2 size card, what they want you to do is go ahead and tuck your card into the cutting folder. Of course, if you have a larger machine, um, you can just leave it you know, opened up or however you want to do it. But you're going to tuck this in here completely tucked in, all right? So it's really nice and tight on the edge there and then we're going to do our die cutting on this one they did say to go ahead and fold it but to be honest you don't have to really fold it or do anything yet because you can just leave it like this and place your die right so we'll talk about that in just a minute which is now i'm not sure why <laughs> in just a minute this is literally the next step so let me open this up and we're going to take the notch die right and that's just to make it easy so when you do the pull tab it's just easy to hold on to it there, right? And this other tab is cut out of that main, that piece that's uh, your card topper, with this die. It'll cut it for you, okay? But this first part, we need to take care of this little piece here, and then we have this guy. And it just says to uh, line notch along bottom right edge of A2 card front, secure notch 
die in place with washi tape. So basically, it, you know, you can pick on this one, you just pick a side, right? Because however you fold it, it could be the, the front or the back or however. It needs to go this way. And you can see this is just kind of there for a guide, but this is what actually cuts. So let's say I pick this side here, and I'm just going to align that just along the bottom edge. Is what they're showing there. I'm trying to see if along bottom right edge of A2 card. It does say along bottom right edge, so what I'm going to do is just make sure it's touching this to here. I think if there's a little bit more to remove, we can do that, but for now, I just want to see what the instructions said. And I do not want this to move, so I'm really going to put some tape here, and here, and I guess just to verify and make sure I have it in the right spot, I can kind of eyeball what this looks like. This is that topper piece, and yeah, so they made it again very generous, so wherever you get in it, kind of in that spot, you're going to be you're going to be good. So. I'm going to use this. I would recommend using a new folder for this, especially if you're wrapping your A2 size card around this. You know, you want it to be nice and... Um, you know, I'll just bring it down here, honestly. I don't need it to run through the whole thing. Just so that it holds it really nice. Because essentially, if you're wrapping your card around this plastic base, it's going to go into this um, little uh, rollers. So you just want it to be nice and easy there. That honestly felt like nothing. <laughs> wow. It just, like, did you guys even notice, like, I didn't have to strain on that or anything. It just went through really nicely. And I'm going to reuse this little piece of tape, of course. And I'm going to take care of this one, too. There we go. And that is our card base basically ready to go. I'm just going to notch that off but if you want to cut it with scissors go ahead and that is our card base with that little notch ready to go put this over here and again I'm gonna get this stuck on here <laughs> do not want to do that um, so step four is cut and color the additional pieces you need for your nutcracker pull tab card so again choose a head <laughs> so cute I love the little example the way they're sitting there it's like choose one uh, let me get some marker paper again super easy to get since I popped in that organizer that we tried out um, for the last craft day uh, let's see here I'm gonna place this in here just in case because I think I'm gonna stamp a few things at once so choose one head choose a mouth <laughs> so cute do you like your little chinny beard uh, like this? <laughs> a little scruffy, a little more curled. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute because honestly, like it looks like this guy goes with this guy because his little hair is the way it is, and this guy's a little bit more curly. So cute. So I'm gonna choose this guy's face again. I'm gonna leave myself some room for the dies because I don't know how much edge are on the dies, and we'll use this little scruffy beard. I think that'll probably be enough for the, both dies. And a nutcracker body. Choose one. Mm, let's go with this one since it's on this side. I want to try different things. <laughs> okay. And then nutcracker props. Choose one for body with bent arm. Oh, I did not choose the body with the bent arm, but that's okay. So if you want to later put a little prop that he's holding, there it is. This guy's just kind of like standing at attention there. And um, a word bubble is optional, it says. Uh, let's go ahead and stamp it that right now. And then we are going to cut some other items. So for now, I'm just going to have these pieces here. I am going to stamp all of these. Again, I chose to do them all at once, so you don't have to do that. It presents you with another little bit of a challenge because you just want to make sure I let go of that air bubble that was under here. And I'm going to use a hybrid ink. But again, if you're using alcohol ink and you have alcohol ink proof ink, that's great. Or if you're using something water based, you want waterproof ink. 
And if you don't know, but you have hybrid ink, then you're good to go because it'll work with both of those things. After it dries. I should always <laughs> caveat that a little bit. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> good thing that wasn't anywhere. Ink. Got my finger over here. And I always have a link for the super basic stuff in the description box because I do get questions about this little tool quite often. Okay, pretty good. I missed in here and right over here. I say I don't do this too like hard. Aw, so cute. One little there we go. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. And while that's drying, because like I said, we can't really color it with alcohol ink until it's dry. Um I'm also going to cut a pull tab guide. Now, normally these things, you see they're the same color because it's going to hide behind this. Um, this is hidden. So, But you are going to line it up probably with this, it looks like. So, you know, you kind of want it to be the same color. That way it kind of fades away if you're just a little bit off when you go to stick it down. So I'm going to think of whatever color I want to go behind him. And actually, I think I'm going to use some pattern paper. I'm going to look at the instructions, the rest of it, and see how important the thickness of the paper might be. Because the pattern paper I have is kind of thick, the what I have in mind, but not super, super thick. Yeah, I think we'll be okay, because really it's the pull tab that you want to be a little extra thick. So I will um, choose some pattern paper, cut that out, and then I'm going to cut this piece um, from something that coordinates, but probably not from the same pattern paper, probably from something sturdier. So I'll just choose a color that coordinates for this one. So we need one of this, one of this, and then the pull tab pieces. And these are reinforce each other, so you can see that they're the same kind of shape. So, we're going to cut this guy and this guy from the same color paper, whatever it is that coordinates with my topper. And I will be right back. Okay, so I have my pieces here that I'll need. And like I said, I just picked a color that coordinates with the pattern paper that I chose for my card topper, which is this one. And of course, just with the white background, it'll look lovely. And again, they're very generous with the way they size this, so that fits in there. It'll be just fine. So, oh, look at the little berries. So cute. Okay, so we have all these pieces. So now what I'm going to do is just color my little guy, and then um, we'll get ready to assemble some things. So I will stamp that probably with something. <laughs> For now, I haven't stamped anything on there. And I do have my markers and everything. I love the red color that is in this set, so I'm definitely using cherry. Probably for his little top. And then with black, when things I, I, I consider that I would like to color black, I do like to just use like ash, uh, dark, and medium, and light which is basically just like the gray tones you can also bring black in too and just do your thing there um things that i would consider gold hmm i wonder if i should go with yellow sorry about that so yeah a lot of times what i do is i mix like yellow with some of the oranges and just kind of have fun with that so you know we'll see um maybe the orange marmalade's pretty but yeah so i just you know get started and like I said, as far as the dark, I usually go like medium and dark, let's say. And I do want to put something behind this paper because this will bleed. And when I say bleed, I mean like go through to the back. I don't mean feathering, bleeding. I just, um, anyway. So. So that's just medium. And then I'll go into dark. Sometimes I'll bring in the light one, but. Not really. Just to give them a suggestion of being like black boots without necessarily calling them in black. And you can go back over that again just to darken it. And again, I like to mix my little yellows and oranges to make things gold. So I'll probably do that with like his little belt and different things like that or like his little buttons and then you can also even bring in like your gel pens and if you have something that's kind of gold and shimmery in here you know we can use that so it's always nice to have this set just 
grab some different things. And normally I would have colored in his red suit first and then added that detail, but either way. So um, I will color him in and I'll be back. Okay, so I have this all colored in. And then um, before I cut them out, I'm going to go ahead and put some sentiments in here because if I cut it out, then you know, I have to kind of line it up. Um, I did just color this part kind of like pink. That's like what comes out of his tongue area, I guess. <laughs> where it opens up. Uh, I just did a light color that way um, whatever I put on there will show up real well. Um, and okay, so let's see. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. Uh, nutty or nice. That's right. I'm going to do that one. That'll be fun right here. We have nutty or nice, and then we just have nom nom <laughs> in his mouth. Um, let me see if there's a specific place I should stamp that. Just trying to see if I can tell by the picture here, because basically you want it to be red, right? So when you pull it down, um, yeah, I'll say probably closer to his little teeth area. So we'll leave that there, and I'll just ink both of them up in black. Stamp those. There's that. There's this one. Let's make sure that's what we want. Okay. And then we'll just cut these out. So sweet. All right. We have those, and now I'm just going to find the um, the dies that match and place those down. And give them a cut. Again, if you want to make an aperture, whenever I show you guys an aperture, I'm sorry, I have all these things around here. Um, you just run the die with a little piece of, you know, washi or whatever kind of tape you like to use um, on a scrap piece of paper, and then that'll cut this out. Go ahead and let that drop out, and then keep the paper and the washi just on the outside attached. You can see through it, and then you can lay this down, and you'll have it perfectly cut every time. But I'm just going to eyeball this one. I like to always put the least amount of tape in the area that we want to keep, just in case. But, um, just like that. And I'll place all the rest of them. And if I need to trim them out to uh, run them through, I will do that. But if not, most of these things, like, I'll keep these together, run them through at once. And this is the little kind of shaggy <laughs> beard uh, here. So I'll have that on here. And again, just hold that down. I'll do the same for all the pieces, and I'll be right back. As I am taping these down, I do want to note that this one does also cut out a little notch, so um, that's just how that one is, okay? <laughs> and I'll tape that down and run it through. Okay, got those cute parts. All right, so, oh my gosh. How sweet. Look at that. Love it. What a little guy. All right, we'll put him to the side for now. Um, we're going to bring back these pieces a little bit. So, when we talk about front and back of pieces like this is like where the die cut into it. So the back side that's kind of raw cut, you know, it's a little sharper instead of being nice and rounded where the die pushed it in. That's the back, right? The raw side. And same thing with this one here. So, if you're looking at, we're on step five now. I think we've cut everything and colored what we need. Um, we're going to glue back to back together. So raw side to raw side. It'll look nice on both sides, but of course, really only one side of this will be showing. And it also says to, um, so I'm turning this over to the back side. Um, if you want to stamp the word pull on this, no, I used a dark color um, paper. You know, I can stamp it with like white or maybe some gold embossing powder, you know, however. But for now, I'm not going to stamp it. But if you were, we will talk about that in just a minute. So, this is the back, but this is the nice side, right? And that's basically B on step 5. And then it says to turn it over, fold front side to front side along scored lines, shown in blue, and back side to back side along scored red lines. So front, we're going to bring this forward, right? And then there's like a couple little score lines here. So it's kind of squared off. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, there's two score lines that are right next to each other there. So I'm just going to kind of score them together. Okay. 
And so on the next page, page six here, not page six, sorry, there's only two pages, um, four sides. Uh, number six, apply adhesive in between scored lines as shown. So in here. So here and here. Yeah, there's another set of score lines right there. And then we're just going to bring them together here. And I'm just trying to hold them down in a way that makes sense, but there we go. It's because those two little score lines, and I'm sorry if that's hard to see because I'm using a dark colored paper, but we're just bringing them to the center basically. So that's kind of what that's looking like. We're showing you there. No, we have these little like flaps here. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to that until that sets up and then we'll move on to number seven. Okay, and so we just finished up step six. Again, if you want to write pull, not write, but stamp pull on here, you can do that just like it's showing you here. Okay, so on that front side, little tab up here, you can stamp pull. But for now, we're going on to number seven and basically we have this here and it says to fold front side to front side. So these little tabs on the score lines coming forward. We're going to bring back that card base like topper that we created. We're going to turn it over to the back and we're just going to glue this down. So basically you're going to put glue all over this part. And then we're just going to pop it down on here. Kind of reinforcing that area. And also just that's where it's going to go. <laughs> So slightly different from other pull tabs that we've done with Diamond Press um, because the other ones we kind of slide it behind this area. This time this guy is going to come around. That's why again this one also has like a double score line kind of near each other to accommodate for something that's going to be in there. So I'm going to hold that down for a second and I'll be right back. Okay so on step eight we're just going to turn it back over to the front and you're going to bring this guy again we have those little flaps that we made. Just put it up through here. Actually, I'll do it the other way. <laughs> See how there's an opening here? It'd be better to go down in there so that way that tucks in. And you can already see pretty much what that's going to be doing, right? Just pull down. So, we're going to open these flaps up. Oh my gosh, this is just genius, you guys. So turn it back over. And we're just going to have this little guy help us keep it uh, sturdy, like in place. Of course, I'm putting glue as much to the edge as I can, but I don't want it to get too messy. And so I would say just hold this down and then make sure this still moves freely and that we don't glue it down, okay? So I'm going to hold this until it sets up. And we're just going to put some dimensional adhesive on the back of this, pop it on the front of our card, and then our put, we'll put our little nutcracker, basically assemble him on here. Okay, I think I'm right. I'm just going to turn this over and just flatten those out for now. And we do have the little dimensional adhesive in here. I love this size of a dimensional adhesive that they have in here. And again, the thickness is really nice really like it and so we're just going to pop a few of these and I'm going to place them strategically like they showed basically so I'm just going to follow along what they're showing here and I'm taking the backs off them and I will be right back so I'm just looking at the diagram and basically doing that okay so I'm putting them where they show and I'll be right back okay so we have our little bits. Again, I just followed what they did for now. We're going to bring back our card base. And it says to center the card base on here. I'm not really letting this sit down quite yet. Oh my gosh, how cute. And again, I don't really push down until I think it's about right. So there we are. And we still have our little pull tab, super easy to use. And so now we're going to glue this little guy down. And basically we're going to tuck him under here and right on top of that area, right? So, and we're just gluing it down completely. That's what it looks like. Again, just under here and right in that same little spot. Oh my gosh. I love that he's kind of silly with what he's saying there and then it's nice and sophisticated the paper. All right, that is step nine. And 10 says to put glue on both sides of this. Let me make sure we're down here. 
and then we're gonna apply our little bearded area I believe yep and it fits perfectly so I'm gonna hold this down making sure I'm not gluing it like way back here I just hold it down for now okay still slides freely I'm gonna let that set up before I come in with the little head but what we are gonna do on the head is put a few more dimensionals just on the very back so I'll just line them up the way they show on the very edges of his little crown and then on either side of his little cheeks and I'll be right back okay and I'm gonna take these little bits off I kind of wanted to see where we should place them before I take everything off so since it's all retracted right now like pushed up inside there you're gonna see what it should look when his little mouth is closed so I think that helps because you want a little bit of the teeth to show you know <laughs> How cute. So I'll pop that on here. Oh my gosh, you guys. And then, moment of truth. Oh, nom nom. <laughs> this is so cute. Okay. And then I had my little nutty or nice. And you can have him stay in that. And again, you have dimensional adhesives. You can pop that up. You can do whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead and just glue it down. And I'm saying something like that. And then they show you can obviously uh, stamp on the inside of the car if you like. Like it says, what's cracking? Nothing. <laughs> and happy holidays from the nut house. <laughs> That's so cute. It's Christmas. You know, you have all your um, other things that you can stamp on the inside if you would like. But look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh. Super adorable. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll have the links in the description box. Thank you so much, Diamond Press, for saying these for a review. This is just a little sweetie. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.